Salams, you're watching News Click. Since 1964, the United National Liberation Front has maintained an active insurgency in India's Northeast with the stated aim of creating a sovereign socialist Manipur. At the peak of the insurgency, the Manipur People's Army, the UNLF's armed wing, had as many as 2,000 armed and trained militants based in camps uh, in and around the Indo-Myanmar border. As far as the Union of India is concerned, the outfit, along with other valley-based insurgent groups such as the PLA, remain banned. The day after Manipur's current chief minister, N. Biren Singh, feigned resignation in a series of events that political analysts have summarized as pure political theatre, Newsclick had the opportunity to sit down in Imphal with former chairman of the UNLF, R. K. Megan, or Sanayama, as he's popularly known. Megan is a well-respected figure in the Maitai community, which is the dominant group in the state. He spoke to us on a range of issues, from the idea of the Maitai demand for scheduled tribe status to the failures of the right-wing government in power in both the state and the centre. This is part of NewsClick's uh, coverage uh, of the conflict in Manipur from the ground, where we were since the 7th of June. Salams, the day after uh, what we are being told was uh, the playing out of well-scripted political theatre in uh, the Manipuri capital, Imphal, uh, we have the opportunity to sit down with uh, Megan, the former chairman of the UNLF, uh, a social activist now and a prominent figure in Methi society. We'll be talking about uh, the genesis of the current conflict, of course, and also what he thinks uh, is uh, the political responsibility of the present establishment uh, in uh, sort of in, in the start of this conflict, as well as what role uh, the government of Nbirain Singh and the government of India need to play in a political solution in what he believes uh, is the idea of an in integrated and uh, an inclusive uh, Manipur in that sense. Uh, sir, thank you for talking to NewsClick. Uh, let's begin with the ST demand, which uh, at least from uh, one side is being viewed as the starting point, right? the reason for uh, all those tens of thousands of people to have gathered uh, in the peace ground at Churachandpur on the 3rd of May in, in that solidarity rally. Uh, organized by the Atsum. Uh, as a Mete yourself, as someone who has been uh, militant politically, has had uh, a strong stance on, on all issues concerning Manipur as well as uh, broader political issues and economic issues, uh, what do you, how do you view the ST demand from uh, the Mete side? Well, <clears throat> uh, before I uh, give my answer to your question, I must tell you that uh, the Maitis, being in uh, about, being uh, settled in about just about six, seven percent of the land area, mm. nine or nine percent, but actually the space of the Maitis mm. is about uh, not even five percent. Mm. Uh, the Maitis, at one time, they were the major community in the valley. Mm. Uh, the whole of Manipur, mm. now it, is, uh, it has weakened. That is one point. And the constriction of the species in the small valley mm. uh, is a, one, another factor, another grievances of the Maitis, that some a section of Maitis uh, thought that becoming a Schedule tribe in the constitution, schedule uh, tribe list mm. is a solution. Mm. But I must say that the grievances of the Maitis, being a very small space, constricted, and finding it difficult uh, to sustain life in the valley, mm. is very genuine. Mm. Because uh, our brothers in the settled tribe list, they have uh, enjoyed the status of settled tribe, the quota system and all. Mm. So the younger generations of the Maitis, they feel that they are being left out. So it is basically a middle class perspective that Maitis must be in the settled tribe list of the Indian constitution. Mm. But from my perspective, mm. I will say their grievances are very genuine, absolutely. Mm. So there must be 
a constitutional solution to the grievances of the Maitis. Mm. But in my perception, in my perception, Settle Drive, to be enlisted in the Settle Drive is not the solution mm. because it is about Maitis, inclusive Maitis becoming exclusive. Mm. Maitis have all along been inclusive mm. because they are the people, the community, who took the maximum responsibility in building um, the land called Manipur. Um, this thing, multi-ethnic, mm. uh, you know, mosaic, mm. Mm. about 35 ethnic mm. groups coexisting mm. and consolidating it into a mm. sort of a uh, state structure right. is not a joke, yeah. though very small. So the Maitis cannot afford to be exclusive. So narrowly divided. So narrowly divided. So the a real solution lies that Maitis should remain inclusive, mm. talk to other uh, communities, mm. and find a common solution mm. that all of the communities can coexist interdependently. Right. And, there's, there, I, and I, I think there is no room for such a solution in the present Indian Constitution. Mm. Indian Constitution needs to be amended so that it can resolve the Manipur situation. Uh, I mean, uh, the government does a thing in terms of, you know, stitching your shirt according to your body, you know, to fit your body, mm. not to slice out the body to fit the shirt, isn't it? This is the situation, you know. So, the, a section of people demanding, Maite people, demanding to be included in the settled tribe list it has, you know, uh, irritated uh, the tribal community, particularly the cookies. Mm. They, uh, they, they felt that the Maitis are, you know, uh, encroaching upon their uh, space, mm. uh, being tribals. So they use this demand for settled tribe mm. to, you know, uh, emotionally charge the younger cookies. That is one thing. So, uh, as I said, uh, once again, I, must, I want to repeat that uh, inclusiveness mm. is actually the nature of Maitis. Mm -hmm. They should remain so, so that all of the communities, all the communities can uh, coexist peacefully, interdependently, and the idea of Manipur can flourish. That's it. Since this situation uh, developed, well, uh, the first one week, I was observing the situation, and after that, uh, this uh, when stories and news of uh, uh, the human tragedy coming out from Churasanpur, Mori, Torbong, and other places, then uh, I started going around places, meeting the victims mm. of the violence, mm. and seeing uh, the condition in the relief camps and interacting with the victims themselves also. Touching stories I uh, got to know. And then I began to think about the whole thing. Why this is happening, mm. which should not have happened at all. Mm. In the first place, uh, the root causes of the conflict, mm. rather the violence, from the cookie side, I must tell you that uh, almost all the cookie leaders, organizations, in the suspension of operations, they are known to me and uh, we had quite good relations yes. before when I was chairman of the UNLF. Uh, so I was... You used to be based in the same region and, and interact quite yes. frequently. Yes, very much. And we had some political understanding also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then uh, I couldn't make out why this is happening. Mm. Because in the history of Manipur, mm. cookies, armed cookies attacking the Maitis in such a scale mm. has, has not happened before. Mm. It's unthinkable. Mm. So the big question is why this time? 
first, uh, as uh, you may be aware, the migration of cookies from the Myanmar side mm -hmm. into Manipur mm -hmm. began in the middle of 18th century, mm -hmm. say about 1740, 41. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, some sort of systematic import of cookie, uh, cookies into Manipur began, in, began during the British period. Um, so that uh, cookies, uh, they are, I mean, uh, for helping the British administrations as uh, they are this thing, so, sort of, uh, what should I say, a force. But, those cookies, uh, those generation of cookies, uh, they, were, they are different in their outlook, in their conduct, and their relationship with my taste. Mm. And we also have accepted them as natives of Manipur. But the problem began when, in the late 90s, in the wake of the Naga Kuki you know, uh, conflict, uh, migration of Burmese cookies or Myanmarese cookies into Manipur began in large numbers. Illegal migration, I mean. As you know, there is an international border. Yes. And anybody crossing on either side of the border must do so with uh, you know, necessary travel documents. But in this border area, there is no such thing. And the cookies on the Manipur side, cookies in groups, I mean, mm. and those in the Chin Hills of the border, that side, I mean, they are kith and kin. Often. That is very right. But even, even if so, even if they are kith and kin, there is an international border, recognized international boundary line. So once one crosses the border to the other side, mm. he is a foreigner there. Isn't it? Mm. But this aspect of the border management was never done in long years. And it is accumulation of that negligence, or rather, whether it is deliberate or not, that is another question. Mm. But not doing so, mm. not managing the border as it should have been done, mm. uh, it uh, has contributed to the present conflict because the cookies, they claim they are also indigenous people of Manipur. So by claiming so, their ethnic identity, they now try to, you know, express that ethnic identity into territorial identity. The problem begins there. Mm exclusive ethnic identity, mm. trying to assert in a specific territorial area. And if that area happens to overlap with other ethnic, ethnic cities, yes. the conflict is there. Mm. So, uh, now, now the Maitis and Nagas mm. strongly react to that. Mm. The Maitis and Nagas say, only the Maitreya Nagas are the indigenous people of Manipur. Mm. So this is actually the... Uh, but uh, so uh, since, uh, you know, I, I, suppose, I suppose if we go by uh, the government of India, or, or uh, there, there are then many uh, sort of ethnicities, tribes uh, that are considered to be um, of Manipur and living in Manipur and have uh, rights that are determined by the constitution. Uh, so maybe we can start off or uh, proceed by first trying to understand what is uh, in that sense your idea of Manipur and how, how do you look at it, who are the people, uh, like is, is it an inclusive idea or, or is it a land that belongs to certain people, how does that fit in uh, yeah, with you? Well, my idea of Manipur is uh, Manipur is a land of uh, those people who have settled here for a long, long time, mm. 
um, whether you call them original settlers or indigenous or whatever. Mm. But, but we, we have also accepted the earlier cookies mm. as natives of Manipur. Yes. And this Manipur mm. is not based on any religious identity. Mm. All the ethnic groups should coexist uh, and co-develop. Mm. That is Manipur. Mm -hmm. And all must respect one another's distinctive identity. Mm. At the same time, they must also promote a larger collective identity so that they can uh, create a new culture of coexistence. Mm. That's my idea of Manipur. Mm. Inclusive, very much. Mm -hmm. But then, when others say, for example, cookie, say cookie for cookies. Mm. That is very exclusive. Mm. And that exclusive uh, ideology mm. or political ideology comes into conflict with uh, inclusive ideology. But even so, we have always tried to coexist with all the communities, ethnic communities in Manipur. Because why? The Maitis, though being in the very small uh, this thing, maybe about 6% or 7% of the total uh, land area of Manipur. Mm. They are the uh, people who took the most, you know, uh, uh, this thing, uh, uh, share of responsibility in creating uh, the land called Manipur. Mm. Of share, you may say external vision, mm. like uh, the Manma, the Bamis did in the uh, the, the for, for second, second half of, uh, I mean, the second decade of uh, 18th and 19th century. So that is how hmm, the land Manipur began to be uh, consolidated and developed. Mm. But then, Maitis, while taking care of themselves as a people, they cannot afford to be exclusive because they are the one who must sacrifice the most so that the idea of Manipur is, does not break up. Mm. So when we say uh, the integrity of Manipur, mm. that uh, entails the special responsibility of the Métis. Mm. And if the Métis fail to take this responsibility, mm. then the idea of Manipur disintegrates. Mm. That is my concept of Manipur. Mm. Idea of Manipur. Mm. So not, not just uh, a territorial uh, concept in that sense, but 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 in you know uh, in all aspects, whether uh, social aspects and even spiritual aspects. Uh, so uh, in the beginning, at least uh, from a mainland perspective, uh, th there was uh, a sense that, or uh, from the coverage at least, that this is a conflict between uh, a group that is a a dominant group in terms of size, uh, and b also belonging to. Uh, the same political force that runs the central government uh, and uh, essentially a Hindu group, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because those are the terms in which I suppose these conflicts are commonly understood in an Indian context. Uh, and a, a group of tribals who are a minority and uh, belong to the Christian faith predominantly. Is that a framework that applies in, uh, to this? And if so... Mm. No, no, it doesn't how? apply because, you know, my tea, the Métis people, <coughs> of course, originally, they have their own philosophy of life. Mm. Rather, some people like to call it religion. Mm. But to me, it's not just a religion. It's mm -hmm. a philosophy of life called Sanami. Mm. Uh, but in this thing, uh, in early 18th century, mm. then these uh, preachers from West Bengal came, mm. and the king, after expanding the territory of Manipur, three days beyond the Indian River. Mm. And uh, in, in the north, up to the up to Sip Sagar of Assam, mm. and in west, Sanpur of uh, beyond Kasar. Mm. That was the Manipur. But he embraced Hinduism. Mm. So, so even when he uh, embraced Hinduism, mm. uh, he, he, he was a mighty, mm. like that today also. So many uh, this thing. Uh, Maybe not just Sanami, Hindus are there among the Maitis, mm. and now even Christians are there. Among the yeah. yeah. So, so the Maitis cannot be identified 
on uh, religious, religious lines. Mm -hmm. Religion is actually uh, individual's uh, uh, right of choice, of choice mm -hmm. uh, freedom of faith mm -hmm. and belief mm -hmm. and that no one can uh, say no. Mm -hmm. So the idea of Manipur, or mm -hmm. particularly Mahitis, cannot be based on religious beliefs and faith. Mm -hmm. That is one. Mm -hmm. So in this conflict also, mm -hmm. Mahitis were fighting against the cookies. There are Christians, there are Hindus, there are tsunamis. But there may be some effort. Some goddess may want to identify it uh, as Hindu maitis fighting as uh, Christian cookies. Mm. That was the story. Uh, I mean, the other side of the story mm. being spread around the international media, yeah. but not so, not so. So, so has it been uh, politically created this this narrative? And if so, to what end? What what is the sort of purpose of creating this divide in, uh, in, a, in a region which is also in, in its own way for hundreds of years has had its own dynamics and its own sort of both differences and commonalities like you were mentioning. Well, your question uh, brings out one thing. Uh, as I said, mm -hmm. the cookies have never attacked uh, the Maitis because the older cookies they are the cookies who even protected the Maitei kings in times of external threat. Yeah. And the uh, Burmese cookies who migrated into Manipur recently, in recent history, they do not know Manipur, mm. they do not have any love for Manipur, mm. and they, particularly they don't have any feeling of coexistence with the Maitis and other ethnic groups. Mm. This is one thing. Mm. Uh, and they have become arrogant mm. and uh, they have developed a political ideology of creating a cookie land, mm. which is, uh, I mean, not at all acceptable uh, as, uh, you know, the history of Manipur. Mm. does not allow it to think on that line. Mm. So, the, I mean, the idea of uh, having a cookie land separate from the Manipur, mm. it is a challenge to the very idea of Manipur. So the Métis mm. uh, and the Nagas mm. don't accept it mm. Mm. wholesale. Mm. The big question is why the cookies have decided to attack the Métis this time. Mm. Arm cookies. Mm. One feels that there are certain forces who want this conflict yeah. so that they can take advantage of it. Mm. Mm. So, so the question points to the government of India. Mm. All along, the state government as well. The, yes, yes, very much. Uh, the, very much. And also, in this case, there are two sides of the yes, same, same coin. Very much. I mean, all along, you have seen divide and rule mm. from the British time mm. being continued this time, mm. and today also. Mm. So, uh, one feels that that divide and rule is now becoming divide and destroy. Mm. So many armed cookies. May, may, may run into thousands. Mm. And the number of uh, uh, this thing, cookie armed groups mm. in the suspension of operations, mm. there are not so many. Mm. In terms of arms and men, right. there are not so many. So uh, the authorities have claimed that all the this thing, uh, uh, those armed cookies mm. in the suspension of operations, they have been listed and the arms have been collected and deposited. That's okay, but others armed cookies, not in the Sue mm. are roaming around mm. freely. Mm. Why? Mm. This is one question. So, this points to uh, the common, uh, common people's uh, notion that the government is helping the cookies.
they have rather told the cookies that this is the right time to take metis. Mm. Because from all uh, aspects, the metis are in a very, very weak position. Take, for example, the, uh, you may say, the insurance, insurance armed groups are now uh, at the lowest ebb of their existing strength. Mm. And the metis as a community, as a mm. people, they are very fragmented. Fractured. Fractured. Yeah. Fractured. Everyone has their own yeah, yes, uh, yeah. idea of uh, what yeah, to do. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And not a single voice is there. Mm. So I think the cookie minds mm. would not have analyzed such things. Mm. A deeper analysis has gone into, uh, you know, uh, create this situation. Mm. So the common men are now uh, openly protesting that some rifles is helping the cookies. Mm. with ammunition, yeah. with other logistics, mm. and even in the field, fighting field. Mm. Uh, yesterday, uh, some mighty youths died from a Assam Rifles bullet. Mm. So, but Assam Rifles cannot do this on their own, except uh, without any specific orders or instructions from the higher-ups. Mm. But, but why, how is it in the interests of India to, to have this uh, conflict? So, like you so yourself are pointing out, uh, a group such as UNLF, which, which you were the chairman of, uh, are now at their lowest ebb. I think the idea of uh, free market economics has taken hold. Uh, the people, like we were seeing uh, three months ago, the people have different aspirations now, uh, those kind of... Uh, uh, movements that are fought by militants with uh, radical ideology uh, don't seem to be kind of uh, finding so much space to be voiced, and uh, and and then suddenly uh, this happened. How how is this in the interests of uh, let's say even if we consider forget about the wider uh, sort of uh, interests of India as as a union, but but just uh, in terms of the government looking at a general election coming up in 2024, uh, how, why would it be in anyone's interest to see this as the time to, to have this uh, yeah, You are very right. But then, you see, uh, there are other factors, you know, a developing situation. I mean, my observation, mm. the talks between the government of India and the NSM I am, mm. you know, has been dragging for 25, 26 yeah. years yeah. and no conclusion in sight. Mm. Uh, bog down on two points, flag and constitution. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are trying to find a way out mm -hmm. to compromise. Mm -hmm. But even so, uh, the developments within the Nagaistra, Nagaland state, the NNPZ, Naga Nation political groups, mm -hmm. they have decided to uh, mm, bring about a solution within the jurisdiction of the Nagaland state. Mm. And they have said, Nagas from Manipur are not indigenous people of the Nagaland. Mm. They are domiciles. Mm. So they have, this has created a schism mm. in the Naga movement mm. also. Mm. Now, the Nagas of Manipur, what stand they will take? Mm. They will definitely look to the Maitis, mm. certainly. And uh, this is what is developing now, after the cookie attack on the Maitis. Mm. So we, we were in uh, Churchandpur uh, yesterday and, and we were meeting with some of the current leadership of these uh, organizations that are heading the current movement. Uh, and they say firstly, the demand for separate administration is an old one. Uh, and secondly, that this was not an attack engineered by the cookies. They are too small and too weak to ever think of being in a position to attack the Maitis. Uh, and that, in fact, it is a pogrom, uh, a sort of genocide, a process of ethnic cleansing. Uh, what would be your response to that? Well, you see, just uh, the chronology of the events mm -hmm. uh, on May 3, they organized a rally. Solidarity rally mm. on the very day mm. when the vice president of India was coming to Manipur. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why the coincidence? Mm. Normally, when a VVIP like the vice president mm. travels to any state, mm. 
No such public gatherings are not allowed. Mm. I mean, it's for security reasons. Sure, sure. But that day, mm. I don't know how it happened. Mm. The rally was permitted, mm. given permission. It began around 11.30, I think, mm. or 12. And uh, ended up about uh, 3.30. Mm. And then the violence began in mm. Surasanpur. Mm. Spread to Mori by about 4 o'clock, mm. 4.30. And then, of course, uh, from Churasanpur to Kangwai, Torbung, mm -hmm. this side, hordes of Kuki people, particularly with the young armed Kukis, mm -hmm. came down, about 10, mm -hmm. 15,000 of them, mm -hmm. looted all the shops along the road, mm -hmm. and then burned them down, uh, burned down houses of about two villages, mm -hmm. maybe about 400. It all began that way. Mm. In fact, the Maitis were caught unawares. That was the beginning mm. of the problem. Mm. Uh, organized attack on the Maitis by armed cookies. Mm. I'm not blaming the entire cookies, mm. just the armed cookies mm. Mm. with an agenda. Mm. And the attack actually was not from Chorasanpur side only, in Mori only, from the north side also. Mm. A village called Iko mm. was completely wiped out mm. in Saikuleria Kangkopi district. Mm. So the Maitis reacted in a very spontaneous mm. and localized actions mm. where Koki settlements were there. Mm -hmm. In Imphal, of course, local Maitis attacked some Koki houses. In, uh, along the uh, airport road, nearby the airport. So about three, four days, it was just a spontaneous reaction of uh, localized reactions, mm. the way mm. There was no ethnic cleansing at all. Mm. But many houses, you, you have seen, yes. for example, yes. did you see any Maitei house now standing? Mm. No, you won't see. All bulldozed, mm. levels. And out of 14, 15,000 Maitis in Surasanpur, mm. only about 9,000 have been counted. Mm. And those laborers, workers, uh, in the road construction inside areas, they have not been traced so far. Mm. And Mori, uh, almost 95% of Maiti mm. uh, houses, buildings, and business establishments mm. have been raised to the ground. So, it is actually, mm. the, they say, uh, pogrom and uh, ethnic cleansing and whatnot in a, uh, the document called in the inevitable split. Mm -hmm. It is actually the opposite story that happened. Mm. It is they who started the ethnic cleansing mm. in Chorasanpur, Mori. Mm. And Maiti reacted. Mm. And one thing, mm. when Maiti react, mm. and if someone to choose Maitis to be their enemy, mm. I tell you, Maitis is the worst enemy, mm. really. Mm. But it takes time for the Maitis to become an enemy. Mm. And Maitis are not easily provoked. Yeah. So, so uh, anyway, I, I think at this point, uh, both sides have uh, sort of also highly developed narratives on this front and, and there is no meeting ground on, on who started it. Uh, so I guess, uh, moving forward from there uh, to uh, where we are now, uh, do you see it as a stalemate at present? What do you see as the possibilities for a political solution? Uh, and also in that, what role do you see uh, Chief Minister uh, Birin Singh having played? Because uh, we've also, as observers, as neutrals, as also journalists, uh, have seen that some of the rhetoric uh, over the past uh, a couple of years, you know, like you make the distinction between, uh, let's say, old cookie and those who you say are now illegal migrants coming in. Uh, those distinctions have, uh, or you say you don't blame all of the cookie people, only the armed groups uh, for the violence or the conflict having started. Uh, those distinctions haven't often been made in, in, in uh, public speeches, uh, in the news, in interviews, uh, in conversations with the general public by uh, the chief minister. And, and so, uh, the idea that 
essentially all cookies are uh, narco terrorists mm -hmm. and illegal immigrants and foreigners and have no space. Uh, from a minority perspective, I'm sure that's also a frightening uh, situation to feel in. And, and of course, label, uh, lab, those labels are, uh, they are hurtful. Very much. Yes, uh, you're right in that sense. Actually, a responsible person, uh, like the chief minister, I mean, I should not make any comments that may hurt the sentiment of a particular community. Uh, you know, you need to be uh, very clear about the idea of Manipur. Mm. When you don't have a clear vision of the idea of Manipur, mm. you make irresponsible remarks. Mm. And that's where, when it is politicalized, mm. it, it has very dangerous consequences. Mm. He being a mate, uh, whatever he does is interpreted on ethnic lines. A mate is a minister. Mm, mm, mm. That happened, of course. Mm. Say, for example, about eviction of uh, and crosses in reserved forests and protected forests. Yeah. It was used as a sentimental tool to wave off uh, emotions, sentiments among the young cookies. Mm. Because and crosses in the hill areas, uh, reserve forests and uh, protected forests, mm. most of them are cookies. Mm. Naturally, they are hurt, mm. and it is used as a political, you know, uh, uh, this thing element to to incite mm. young cookies. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, so, so in that sense, is this a, a, what, a, what we are uh, all uh, at this point, because the entire population of Manipur is now uh, involved in this conflict, whether they like it or not. Uh, is this a culmination of this process of sort of right-wing politics playing out? Uh, in well, anyway, that's it. Mm. Because I will tell you, mm. all along, the inherent weakness of the Indian political system mm multi-party political system mm. and uh, particularly when a right-wing uh, political party comes to power mm. naturally you know they want to create divisions of the society on you know religious lines yeah. and these lines mm. that was happening yeah. that was happening so I mean the Christians feel that they are being persecuted mm. Mm. that was I mean, they have a sense of insecurity. Yeah. And in, a, in Manipur, in a situation like in Manipur, mm -hmm. we cannot afford to, you know, that uh, uh, such divisions in society. Yeah, right. We need unity. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. need cohesiveness. Yeah. Of course, uh, we respect one another's distinctive uh, cultural identities yeah. and of all that. Yeah. That should be the strength of Manipur. Yeah. Instead of building that unity, mm -hmm. If you try to disintegrate on uh, narrow uh, and sectarian lines, it breaks up yeah. and it creates confusion, yeah. and that confusion violence erupts. Yeah. That's thing, the whole story. So, since you have such a deep understanding of uh, both uh, the strengths of both sides, uh, from from let's say what, what maybe what we can call a military or an armed perspective, also uh, going back to the previous uh, question, are we at a stalemate, and and how do you see the way forward? Well, uh, being human, mm. we need a peaceful environment. We need to think about our future, about our young generations for their future. So we need uh, uh, this thing, a sincere approach from the government of India, mm. number one, mm. and the state government. Mm. Number two, from the cookies side also, mm. they need to understand the objective reality, mm. and they must. The older cookies, yeah. they must tell their uh, kid and kin that those who have migrated legally, mm. they, they must be convinced that they must go back to Myanmar, mm. and the government should ensure that those who have entered Manipur illegally. Whether they are given a, uh, this thing, a work permit or something, something, that 
they are recognized as foreigners, mm. uh, they, do, they should look into this aspect. Mm. So first, essentially a process of recognition has yes. to happen, yes. acceptance yes. has to happen. Right. That, uh, right. That, right. That, if that happens, mm. of course, uh, many people have died, mm. many have suffered, mm. only because of partisan politics. Mm. Ultimately, it is the common people who mm. suffers. Mm. Of course, yes. And we have seen it on the ground. Right, the, right. And the poorest of the common people right, suffer right. the most. Right, right. So, uh, what the Maitre should do is, Maitre also should look back, mm. step back, mm. one step, and look around, see things, mm. and try to bring about, uh, you know, uh, some sort of, uh, as we have done before, yeah. reach out to those common people. As the we've heard often also the story of the big brother and the little and the younger brother, right? So from that perspective. Uh, but one thing the government just would mm. show that the armed cookies, mm. particularly those uh, not just in the zoo, mm. but armed cookies mm. uh, should be reined in. Mm. And of course, in the valley, mm. you, you have seen thousands, thousands of volunteers. Yeah. They are not trained. Mm. Just out of emotion, mm. they just got all got all of guns, weapons from somewhere, somewhere, mm. and go to the front, mm. fight there, mm. and sacrifice there. Mm. That is the kind of you know, the feeling and sentiments among the Maitis young yeah. people. And if it is not uh, given the right direction, mm. well, we will have more chaotic situations coming. Yeah. And one should not try to, you know, uh, face in the troubled waters. And, and that will ultimately affect India's unity also. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, in that sense, the, the, the frustrations and, 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 and also fears of the common people have been weaponized in, in this case, and that's what led, has led to this. Uh, unfortunate uh, as it is, there doesn't seem to be any short-term sort of uh, solution to this. Do you, do you see, I mean, this as a, as a conflict that will, in uh, some way, maybe at a lower intensity, sort of uh, play out for many years? Because we saw, for example, when the Nagakuki conflict, uh, it took 10 years to kind of come to some level of common uh, trust, mutual trust and understanding. Uh, is this also something and, uh, that will take uh, Manipur in that sense uh, back to uh, a phase of uh, another 10 years of, of conflict, which let's say a younger generation has not uh, actually witnessed before? Well, sincerely and frankly, uh, if all the measures that yeah. need to be taken yeah. are taken up, and the period of, uh, you know, uh, coming to normalcy mm. uh, may, be short, may be shortened, but the sporadic incidents mm. will continue to happen because I have seen that uh, so many hearts have been broken, coming to terms with the reality. And, and those young, young people uh, coming from for example, mm. now, uh, in the relief camps, yeah. they are in a, in a state of, you know, uh, revenge. Mm. Uh, they don't want anything except revenge. Mm. So, consoling them or counseling them <coughs> will take time. Mm. Yeah, and so far, I don't see any action being taken in this direction. Yeah. I have interacted with a number of them. And I think it's and I, exactly exactly. I was just going to say I think I think that sense is is there on both sides that uh, there needs to be some idea of justice before uh, a yes. wider sense of peace yes. uh, is brought about. I mean, or comes about. there must be a third investigation: yeah. who initiated or created or instigated this violence? That should be brought out. So it will, I suppose, be interesting to see. Uh, 
what is judged as a as an impartial party, and and there that brings us back to the government of India, I guess, right. uh, as as the biggest of the big brothers in the in the room to play that role. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for taking so much time to speak to Newsclick and for speaking to us so frankly and 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 giving us your assessment of things uh, from I think a fairly overall uh, well-rounded perspective. Uh, it's you. been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.